Two-Face regrets not doing much for Damikrain at Hypertech. Damikrain shared a screenshot of um, the DM he received from Tubaba where he wrote, um, and I quote, Dami, you know, I tell people that I did not do much for you because you made yourself. You have a good charisma and you are so alive with your movement. I wish I did not have all the legal things um, when you were in hypertech, end of quote. Dami responded saying he will continue to celebrate to Baba that his messages inspires him to do more. Mm. Um, off the back of that, there was also another response from a family member from what the person wrote, that's it on the screen. Um, this person is supposed to be Dami Crane's mother's sister. And he was saying that, so she, I don't know, was saying that, um, okay, they added it there, a family rep, to make you know that this is a statement from the family, that whoever is behind that was personally thinking, personally had a beef with Tubaba for right. coming to the family, um, encouraging them to let um, Dami Queen go out there, and then it suddenly felt like you let the young boy make so many decisions for himself, and then um, just do things on his own. And mm. she's saying that she's... Um, happy that he's doing this now, but that there's, there's still time and room to make amendments. So, yeah, I think I, I get where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah same. Uh, it's it's such a a deep thing. Mm -hmm. I think you can look at it and, and say this is somebody's life that they have placed in your hands. Like, made me think, wow, what could Dami Crane have been like to Nigeria, to Africa, to the world mm. if... Um, he had... Better management. <clears throat> yeah, if we had better management. I mean, it's funny because this week we've been talking a lot about, you know, artists and big record deal labels and, you know, and it, it, it's kind of like that mentor and mentee relationship. And it's so important having someone who's really got your back. So this story was really sad to me that Demi Crane didn't have that. I'm not saying that if Two Face was in his life, he'd be bigger than now, but it just makes me wonder because so far the music that I remember of him wasn't actually bad. So... Um, now I, I appreciate the the sympathy, but like remember, I say sorry, kind of fix this issue. Mm. So um, I don't know. But I, I like that he he is matured enough to know that he's supposed to do this, and he said this message has helped him um, know that he's supposed to work harder to inspire more people. However, I also want to look at it from what we see in the industry right now, where. Any little trouble with an artist and the management, they go their separate ways, and then you realize that there is a new record label. It's kind of like church. And the boss, everybody is the boss. Like, is mm. it, 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 what does it take to own a record label? Is mm. it just about um, being an artist and yeah. having been able to be in the studio and put out good music? What exactly does it take? That's what comes to mind for me. And mm. to discuss that, um, we have a veteran on the phone with us to have this conversation. He is. Dayo Adeneye, popularly known as um, D1. You know, you yeah. don't really call Keke without calling <laughs> yeah. D1. So um, he and Keke were in charge or, yeah, were in charge of Kenny's music, music when Kenny's time, music yeah. was the big deal. Yeah. I think they are still the big yeah. deal and they put in a lot of work to make sure that the industry is what it is today. Yeah. So, hello, Mr. Adeneye. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the show this morning. My pleasure. Okay. Um, as someone who has been in the industry for a very long time, who understands the business of um, record label and managing an artist, and looking at what we have now, a case of almost every artist having a record label to themselves, do you think this um, is healthy for the environment? Um, it depends on what you mean by do I think it's healthy. I mean, it's, it's relative. Um, but I think the question should be, is it in the best interest of the artist? Um, if you ask me, then I'll say no. Um, what people don't understand, especially musicians and artists, is that there's a business model to this. It's called show business. There's a show side of it, and there's a business side of it. And you have to understand that this applies to any business you're doing. Uh, let's say you want to build a house now. An architect draws the plan for you, right? Then you give it to a quantity surveyor who will tell you you're going to need so many bags of cement, so many by uh, quantity of blocks. You will need this and that and that. So there's what you call division of labor. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. Even let's move away from that. Let's say okay, you work in a bank. The MD has his, his duties. The branch manager has his duties. The clerks, um, the bank tellers. So 
when you apply that to the entertainment or music business, you as an artist, you are the product. So you can't be your own publicist. You can't be your own producer, the songwriter. You promote yourself and you want to own the record. Yes, there's nothing wrong with aspiring to own a record label. But when you do all these things, it doesn't free you to attend to your creative side. So something is going to suffer definitely. So that's my opinion on that. Um, just to build on that, sir, um, for someone who is in a similar situation to Dami Crane, for example, what do you think is the best way forward? Do they try and revamp the relationship they had with the current you know, record label that didn't give them sufficient time? Or do they go find something else? Because we have on our tables here somebody who has obviously come out to say, I'm sorry for not being able to be that person for you. So do, we, do you advise that they keep to that, to that relationship, or do they just move on? Well, I can't speak specifically to anybody's situation. I mean, uh, this, it, it's the person that wears the shoes that knows where it's pinching. Um, if a relationship is not, you think it's not beneficial or it's not healthy for you, yes, you have a right to move on. But the key is, you most are usually end up jumping from the frying pan into the fire. So, um, without being specific to any particular artist, uh, I mean, you look you look at the trend. Most that leave their record labels, they always it's a it's a downward spiral from then on. Because you've moved away from an, an established template and you're on your way down. That's not to say some don't come out of it and succeed. But look, if we are to look at this template where it, where it, it, it succeeds in other climes, whether it's the UK or the US, look, a, a successful artist, name may be it Michael Jackson, be it Prince or Maria Carey, they will, have a, they will hire a publicist. They will hire a management. And that's why you see, whenever they're successful, maybe they're collecting an award, the Grammy or Oscar, the first person they say, okay, well, they thank Almighty God. They thank their parents. But of course, they thank who? Their management. Because, well, you see, that's the problem with our climb. We, we always see things as, uh, it's my money, it's my money. So nobody else should benefit from it. Forgetting that other people have a part to play in your success. You didn't become a big artist overnight. A record label promoted you, recorded you, shot your videos, promoted those videos, promoted your work, set you up for good shows, and put you on platforms where your work can be exposed. But once our artists become successful, they start thinking, oh, the record label is ripping me off. And why are they taking 20% of my money? Why are they taking 30% of my money? But I put it simply, and this is what I always maintain. Look, it's better for you to make a hundred million a year and pay your management, your publicist, and maybe 20, 25% of a hundred million than for you to say you are doing everything yourself and make 20, 30 million a year. That's just what it boils down to. Okay, speaking from experience before you go, what would you want to advise up and coming artists right now and even artists that have blown, using the term they normally use, um, in, in regards to how they manage their relationship with their record label and the management and every publicist around them? My advice simply would be stick to what you know, stick to what you do best. If you are not a publicist, don't try to do the work of a public. You're an artist, you're a songwriter, you are a singer, you are a rapper, stick to what you know best. Then hire the best hands to handle other areas for you. Then step back and let them do their work. Sometimes they might not look as if they are doing much to you, but if they are succeeding in keeping you out of trouble, they are booking successful shows for you, your name continues to remain in the limelight, then let your management, let your record label, let them do what they need to do. Don't listen to the people. I mean, you, you, you know, once you're successful, people will come around. You're the uncles, the, they will come. The aunties, the friends, they'll say, ah, you know, why are you letting this record label do this? Why are you letting your management take your money? You forget that three years ago or two years ago, this same record label, you went there begging and begging them to sign you. But now that you become an established name, it's now, oh, it's my money. You now let other friends, other influences, outside influences, and that's usually what happens. Outside influences, these are artists start listening to people who were not responsible for their success. And of course, usually, I mean, you look at it, it's, 
it's there. The records are there. You name, I don't want to name any artists, but you see, once they leave their record label, they leave that established platform, it's downwards from there. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule, maybe one or two that manage to stay afloat, but usually it doesn't last long. All right, thank you so much for thank your time, you. Mr. Dene. Thank you for having me.